The Andean catfish is endemic to the highlands of the Ecuadorian Andes where it lives in mountain streams in four different drainage basins in the Imbacucha watershed. The species is critically endangered by habitat loss, pollution, and fishing. Habitat loss has fragmented its population. Natural and anthropogenic barriers, such as pasture grounds, fields, human settlements, and the presence of predators such as Pisivorous largemouth bass in Imbacucha Lake have resulted in the segregation of its six subpopulations and limit their probabilities of escape to other refugia when the environment deteriorates. The black-breasted pufflegs' response to microhabitats variations is extremely sensitive. It has been suggested that the species is under competitive disadvantage for the same ecological niche with others hummingbird species, specifically the gorgated sunangle, and that avoidance of forest borders is used to mitigate the stress imposed by the seasonal altitudinal migrations. A primary source of habitat loss has been the construction of the Oleoducto de Crudos Posadas for oil transportation, a route that was established through one of the last remnants of forest. The turquoise-throated puffleg is only known by six specimens which were collected in the 19th century. Virtually all presumed habitat at the type locality has been destroyed. Only a few remnants are left in the steep-sided stream cuts in the arid upper Guaylabamba drainage. It is mostly green with blue undertail covers and white powder puffs of downy feathers on the legs, and the male has a bluish-purple throat patch. Legidium awasanes is known only from Cerro El Ahuaca, a steep granite inselberg in Loja province, in southern Ecuador, where it occurs at an altitude of 1950 to 2480 meters, but only near rocky surfaces. The vegetation is dominated by the molasses grass. They eat plants, and traces of their feeding are visible on the mountain. The species is threatened by fires, used to maintain crop fields in the vicinity, which frequently get out of control and destroy part of the Viscasha's habitat on the Cerro, and by competition for food with grazing cattle. However, the species is unknown to the local people and is not hunted. The Aikido's gnatcatcher is a gnatcatcher described as new to science in 2005. It is currently only known from the Al Pawaya Mishana National Reserve, in Peru. The Junin grebe's exceptional diving skills allows it to feed on small fish and invertebrates. They can be often seen feeding and diving simultaneously in small groups. Large fluctuations in water levels, caused by a nearby hydroelectric plant, and water pollution from mining activities have caused the population of grebes to fall from 1,000 in 1961 to around 200 in 2007. Contamination of the lake from mining waste products kills the small fish that are the Junin grebe's main source of food. The hydroelectric plant can cause the water level to drop below 5 meters, which prevents the birds from raising chicks, and can cause damage to the bordering reed marshes. The white-winged guan is endangered due to a severe loss of suitable habitat, and is also hunted for food. The current population estimated to be approximately 200 individuals. This is a medium-sized crassid, 70 cm in length, and similar in general appearance to turkeys, with thin necks and small heads. The Rio Mayo Titi is better adapted to moderately populated areas, thus overpopulation negatively impacts the species. 
The forests the Rio Mayo Titi lives in are being destroyed for agricultural purposes, leaving little forest for the monkeys. They were only seen a few times and featured in museums until 2003 when more research was done on them. In order for this species to survive, their forests need to be protected to avoid overpopulation. The Cestode atriotinia megastoma has only recently been studied in non-human hosts. This parasite, a type of tapeworm, has been found in numerous species of monkeys in the Peru area. It requires an intermediate host usually found in the soil fauna and this TD is a new definitive host for this parasite. Marine iguanas are unique as they are marine reptiles that forage on inter- and subtidal algae almost exclusively. They forage in the relatively cold waters around the Galapagos Islands. The marine iguana has several behavioral adaptations for thermoregulation. At cold temperatures their muscles are less efficient, but their relatively high temperature preference is also related to the optimal temperature for digesting the algal food in their gut. The marine iguana has a relatively small range and is currently considered vulnerable. The total population for the entire archipelago is estimated to be 200,000 individuals, although this number is labeled with considerable uncertainty. Most subpopulations have not been surveyed in detail. Because their lifestyle and habitat make it difficult to survey with a high level of accuracy. Floriana Mockingbird is endemic to Floriana, one of the Galapagos Islands, but human colonization from 1832 onwards brought predators such as dogs and cats, and within 50 years the species was extinct on Floriana. It now occurs only on two inaccessible offshore islands, including Gardner. Its natural habitat is subtropical or tropical dry shrubland. The Floriana Mockingbird is also known as Darwin's Mockingbird, as it was the arguable inspiration for Charles Darwin's work on the origins of species, he noticed distinct differences between them and previous species he had encountered and consequently established the existence of other variants on neighboring islands. Previously classified as an endangered species, recent research shows that its numbers are decreasing more and more rapidly, and it is on the brink of extinction. As its name suggests, the mangrove finch lives in the mangroves of the Galapagos Islands. The mangrove finch feeds upon the various insects, spiders and vegetable matter found in the mangroves. It is classified as critically endangered, with less than 100 individuals alive today. The Galapagos penguins are confined to the archipelago, foraging in the cool Cromwell current during the day and returning to the land at night. They eat small schooling fish, mainly mullet and sardines, and sometimes crustaceans. The strong tropical sun is problematic for this species. Their primary means of cooling off is going in the water, but other behavioral adaptations for thermoregulation come into play when they must remain on land. One method involves stretching out their flippers and hunching forward to keep the sun from shining on their feet, which exchange heat rapidly because they have high blood flow and lack insulation. Another method is to pant, using evaporation to cool the throat and airways. The species is endangered, with an estimated population size of around 1,500 individuals in 2004, because of the Galapagos penguin's small size, it has many predators. On land, the penguins may fall prey to cats, Galapagos hawks, and short-eared owls. While in the water they are preyed on by sharks, fur seals, and sea lions. They also face the hazards of unreliable food resources and volcanic activity. The Galapagos sea lion is a species of sea lion that breeds on the Galapagos Islands. Being fairly social, they are often spotted sun bathing on sandy shores or rock groups or gliding gracefully through the surf. Their loud bark, playful nature, and graceful agility in water make them the welcoming party of the islands. They are the smallest sea lion species. They are especially vulnerable to human activity. Their inquisitive and social nature makes them more likely to approach areas inhabited by humans, and thus come into contact with human waste, fishing nets, and hooks. 
Regulations governing human behavior help mitigate risks to sea lions due to human contact, but as the human population continues to grow it nevertheless presents risks of accident and disease. The sea lions have learned that being near the fisheries they have a better chance at capturing fish with little to no work, but as a result they are in more danger from boats and net entanglement. They are impacted by humans indirectly as well. Stray dogs introduced by humans form packs and attack sea lions. The Masafuera rayadito is a rare bird endemic to Alejandro Selkirk Island. The species' natural habitat is humid montane scrub, dominated by tree ferns and ferns. Masafuera rayaditos travel in pairs while feeding on arthropods. Feeding occurs in the wood understory and occasionally on the ground in the leaf litter. Nesting occurs at high altitudes, in small natural crevices in rocks. The Masafuera rayadito is a critically endangered species. The species once occurred on surveys of the species in the 1980s found between 800 birds but by 1992 that had dropped to 200 and by 2002 only 140. The species is threatened by introduced species, particularly goats which trample and degrade habitat, but also probably rats and feral cats. The Chilean woodstar is a small bird in the hummingbird family, Trichilidae. It is restricted to northernmost Chile. Its natural habitats are dry shrubland and rural gardens. It is threatened by habitat loss and is classed as a critically endangered species. Most species of Leolemus are omnivorous, but a few purely insectivorous and herbivorous species are known. At all stages of the hooded grebe's life it is vulnerable to predation by the American mink. When the mink first arrived in 2010 on the Buenos Aires Plateau, it killed more than half the adults in a breeding colony of two dozen nests. Other threats to the grebe is threatened by climate change and the introduction. Rags tuco tuco is a species of rodent in the family Tenomyidae. It is endemic to central Argentina, where it is known only from a grassland location in Córdoba province at an elevation above 2,000 meters in the Sierras Grandes. The species is threatened by disruption of its habitat by fire and sheep grazing. It is named after Argentine biologist Osvaldo Rags. 